The movie starts off with a taxi cab traveling through a large bridge. The date is December 31, 2014. The cab glides through the streets from Chinatown to Marine. After a halt, from within comes out a woman, Adeline Bowman, going by a new alias, Jennifer Larson. We skim through the pages of her hauntingly interesting life. The scene opens with Adaline knocking on the door opened by a young man who asks her to be silent as his father is sleeping. Adaline agrees courteously and walks in. Closing the door behind her, Adaline looks at her new identity. Impressed with her new fake identity which seems very real. The man asks Adaline. He asks her why she chose to be 29. After all, she seems way younger than that. Adaline smiles but refuses to answer, hands him a stash of money and walks away complimenting him. Adaline warns him about forgery and its repercussions. Being far from law enforcement, she praises the young man's talent and goes away in the same cab. She enters her apartment and calls out for her small dog. You can see beautiful sketches and the excitement her dog feels as he sees her come in. We get a glimpse of an old typewriter and her wedding picture which seems really old. Letting the sunlight hit, she sits down on the floor planning to move somewhere describing the vast beautiful place to her dog. She leaves her apartment again and grabs a taxi to go to her workplace where she chats with her coworker about her plans for New Year's Eve. She's handed a box of old tapes to look through by her coworker which she happily accepts. Running her fingers through the old archive tapes, she finds an intriguing one, a 1906 tape. She decides to watch it in secrecy, closing down all the blinds and the doors. She looks at the black and white video of carriages and newsletters and reminisces about her childhood. Adeline was born in 1908 and was an only child to her parents, Milton and Faye Bowman. When she was 21 walking through a construction site with her mother, she met a young, handsome gentleman. Just a couple months later, they get married and she soon gives birth to a beautiful baby girl. Just eight years later, her husband dies in a construction mishap leaving Adaline devastated. Sometime later, when Adaline drives to her parents' house, something magical happens. For the first time ever, snow fell in her country. But then, something terrible happens. Adaline's car skids and falls down the road into a deep lake. The sudden attack caused her body to stop breathing and slow her heartbeat. Soon after, her temperature falls and her heartbeat stops. A couple minutes later, lightning strikes the vehicle where her body is stuck in. The effects are threefold. Cataclysmic lighting occurs from the water. The lightning defibrillates her heart and brings her back to life. Not only that, she becomes immune to the ravages of time. Her DNA is compressed so as to stop her aging. Adaline remembers her beautiful memories of the past but suppresses the pain. She credits her non-aging appearance to a healthy diet and exercise but we all know otherwise. When asked about it, she quickly deflects the topic never meeting her acquaintances ever again. But the suspicions increase after police don't believe her when she gets caught in a minor traffic inconvenience. She flees the town and goes back to where she was born as a clerical assistant. She researches her condition day and night. After no result, she is convinced that there's no explanation for her condition. She soon gets caught by the Federal Bureau because of this and is forcefully taken away in a car. As they prepare to take her away in a plane, she escapes from the trunk and runs to her daughter telling her never to talk about Adaline again. She promises her daughter to come back and love her but circumstances are difficult at the moment. She gives her a ring as a sign of love and moves away, changing her name and residence every decade. For 60 years, she keeps doing this and plans to move again to a new place. After a moment of weakness, she leaves her workplace through all the painful memories and goes back to her house. She only has one friend who just so happens to be blind much to her convenience. The friends plan to meet and Adaline gets ready at a party. At the party, Adaline sees a photo of herself long from the past but her looks are just the same. She sees her friend playing piano and they meet up talking about their resolutions. Adaline vows to live her year as though it were the last. They get approached by a beautiful gentleman who's a painter. That's when her eyes meet a beautiful man who so elegantly locks eyes with her. But unfortunately, he's taken. She leaves the party at exactly 12 which marks a new year and her birthday. Her elegant beauty attracts strangers all the time and she's approached by another young man. After a brief conversation, she walks into the party again. She bids goodbye to her friend and leaves when a man bumps into the elevator she walks in. It's the same man who locked eyes with her earlier. They have a brief conversation and the man introduces himself as Ellis. He recites a poem about her name making her chuckle. They have a wonderful conversation and he admits he's pursuing her. Adeline walks off without paying much heed to Ellis. Ellis pursues her anyway and waits until she leaves in a cab. He asks for further information but she leaves without a word. In a cafe somewhere, Adeline meets up with an old woman who happens to be her daughter, Fleming. Fleming wishes Adeline a happy birthday and they have a wonderful chat. They talk about her moving again. Fleming has aged a lot and plans on moving herself. Adaline, being a mother nonetheless, asks Fleming to stay close to her because of her old age. Adaline is afraid she might lose her daughter soon. The very next day, as Adaline is working, a writer is said to come to the library she works at and donate most of his books. The writer is none other than Ellis. Fate makes them meet again. He gives her some books and says he noticed her walk out of a meeting. They have a conversation about donations and Adaline is asked to take a photo. 
She cordially declines but Ellis doesn't take no for an answer. He then asks her on a date instead of the photograph but Adaline is too hesitant. She finally agrees. For their date, they go to a cave-like place. The cave is home to make sunken boats that Ellis preserves. It's fascinating and Adaline is mesmerized. Adaline tries to leave but Ellis stops her to have lunch. Adaline declines and Ellis walks her back. She tells Ellis she's moving away soon. Ellis tells a funny joke and she's impressed. She agrees to one more date with Ellis. Adaline, as Jennifer Larson, asks for another nominee for her bank account in her bank. On the wall, she sees the photo of a man she once did business with in the past some years ago. She had invested in Xerox many years ago which has definitely paid off well. As she's getting a new name, she sets herself up as a co-signer on her bank account under a new name. Later that night, Adaline meets up with Ellis for their second date in his apartment. They talk about his unfinished apartment which requires plaster and paint. Slowly but surely, their connection further increases. He cooks for her and they have dinner together. They play jazz and drink wine. Ellis explains to Adaline about his father who rose to fame by discovering a comet that should have passed Earth, but it didn't. They are still hopeful for the comet to pass and look for it every year. Ellis and Adaline have a great time and flirt engrossed in each other's words. They sit by his window where Ellis tells her the first time he saw her. It was magical and enigmatic. They spend the night in each other's arms. Adaline falls for Ellis after years and years of running. He becomes her solace. The next morning, Ellis is on the phone having trouble with the work call in Portuguese. Adaline rapidly fires off some Portuguese on his phone and leaves. While going to work in a taxi, Adaline has a flashback to an unknown man fiddling with an engagement ring. She doesn't go to meet him. Tears fall down her eyes as she reminisces the young man's sullen face because she stood him up. At her apartment, Adaline's dog is extremely sick. The vet tells her his kidney is failing and may pass away soon. Adaline is heartbroken as she has to put him down. She returns to her apartment whilst ignoring all of Ellis's calls. She skims through all of her dog's photos and cries. At night, Ellis shows up at her cheap apartment in Chinatown and she freaks out demanding to know how he found her address. She tells him about her dog and brushes him off as this wasn't going to work. Adaline is very stressed. Alice is deeply saddened. Adaline goes to visit her daughter who's moving away soon. She tells her daughter she's tired of running and hiding. That's when her daughter urges Adaline to stop running as the people who were interested in catching her have long since passed away. Adaline laments on how she has no future and can never grow old with anybody. Adaline tells Fleming about Ellis and her pushing him away. Her daughter tells her to get him back. After looking through her old photographs, she has a change of heart. She's clearly very lonely. She takes her daughter's advice and goes back to Ellis' work to apologize. They go on a date to an old covered drive-in movie theater. She explains the history as if she was there. They drink wine and look at the stars on the ceiling. He asks her to attend his parents' 40-year anniversary party and she says yes. On the way there, she drives absolutely recklessly, and they pick up his sister. In another scene, Ellis' father expresses his concern for his son and his new girlfriend. Soon enough, Adaline and Ellis enter his parents' home and she is greeted by William Jones, who immediately calls her Adaline. She says that was her mother. He's very shaken and says they were very close as Adaline was a very close friend of his. He is fascinated by how uncanny their resemblance is. William can't stop talking about Adaline which makes his wife a little annoyed. He's in his room extremely stressed. There's another flashback which explains how they met. Adaline was having car trouble while she was living in England and he was a soldier studying medicine overseas. For the first time, she told him her real name which she promised she would never do. They both returned to America together and spent the next five weeks together. They madly fell in love with each other. The next morning, William greets his wife and children along with Jenny also known as Adaline. William's wife asks about Adaline to him and he fully tells them about her and gets lost in his words just appreciating her. He describes things about Adaline that Ellis picks up on such as her interest in languages and driving skills. He tells them about how she pushed William to follow his dream of astronomy instead of medicine as he was afraid of running out of time. He talks about Adaline like his most beautiful memory, like he never forgot about her which gets his wife annoyed. They two quarrel for a bit as he hurt her. He assures his wife that he only loves her. Adaline and Ellis then go for a walk expressing their likings about each other. That night, they all play trivia. William is on a 47-game winning streak. Adaline pretends to not know an answer but after a diss by Ellis she goes all out and wins. The family jokes that they didn't know what would happen first, William's loss in trivia, or the arrival of Della, a meteor he predicted would come and also Adaline's nickname. Adaline wins the trivia and then goes for a walk. She walks and meets William on their walk where they talk about Della. Jenny Aka Adaline tells him she knew about him naming the comet about her mother and William admits it. William tells her he was going to propose to her. He was the one with the engagement ring. She goes back to the house and Ellis tells her he is falling for her. She doesn't say it back but Ellis understands and they cuddle. The day of the party, everyone is out doing things. Adaline talks to William when he removes a bug from her hair. That's when he notices a scar on her left hand. Adaline goes for a walk but William runs to his storeroom desperately searching for something. 
Her scar was from the stitches he made while they were hiking when her hand got cut. He rummages through the old shed to find a picture to make sure he isn't crazy. He runs after her, asking her if this is the reason she left him. She says yes. She admits how much she loved him and how much it hurt. William understands. He begs her not to run but she says she doesn't know how. She runs back to the house, writes a note to Ellis, packs, grabs his car keys and leaves. William begs her to stay but she can't. She doesn't know how. Ellis comes home and is confused. William doesn't explain anything. William asks if he loves her and he admits it. William lets Ellis drive his car to chase after her. Adaline is driving in the woods when she stops. She calls her daughter and they have a moment. She decides she will stop running. As she turns the car around, a tow truck plows into her and drives off. A meteor hits the moon which increases tides and ionization on Earth. For the first time in 76 years, snow begins falling again in that county. Ellis pulls up and sees what's happening. He tries to wake her up but she's presumably dead. The paramedics use a defibrillator on her which brings her back to life. An ambulance takes her to the hospital. She wakes up to Ellis and decides to come clean. Her daughter arrives, sees Ellis, and says I'm her grandmother. Adaline tells her he knows and she cries with joy and hugs him. Back at the house, William and his wife celebrate their anniversary and happiness knowing Ellis is with Adaline the love of his life. A year later, Ellis and Adaline are going to a New Year's Eve party. Adaline suggests her daughter to go out but she has a date night in. Before leaving, Adaline checks the mirror and does a double take. She plucks a gray hair, a sign of aging. Apparently, a combination of the defibrillator and hypothermia have restored her humanity and her DNA's pliability. Also, Della the meteor arrives. It's 50 years too late, but it shines brighter than ever. Subscribe for more interesting romance movies only on Enrecaps.